the fighter jet. The cutting edge of mankind's technological blade has been evolving for decades in every way. The dogfight, long an epic battle of manoeuvrability and skill, has been replaced by a who can detect who first, almost always from beyond visual range. With modern stealth fighters having such advanced detection systems and missiles in link with systems such as AWACS, the most important factor of what makes a winning fighter jet has become less about speed, turn radius, and more about how hard it is to detect, how good its sensors are, and how well it works in a data link with other air and ground assets. Like how the turn of warfare from the swordsman to the rifleman, the times have changed once more. The SU-57 is an attempt to approach the modern world of combat while being strong in only the ways that are no longer skirmish deciding traits. While a wonderful looking aircraft with decent manoeuvrability and speed and an interesting noise to boot, it is inadequate for modern air-to-air -air combat. With the SU-57 being produced as Russia's premier stealth fighter, it seems that it fails to achieve that role. Instead, decided to be the fighter jet equivalent of a lighthouse when compared to its competition. Now, if I'm going to tell you that the SU-57 isn't very good as a stealth fighter, I'll have to explain how. And to start off, that means explaining how this is calculated, how stealth is measured, and that's in radar cross-section. So when a radar is looking for a target, and that aircraft is being picked up by radar, how much is being picked up as stealth aircraft are not invisible but low observable so if it is a small object on radar it may be completely undetected or filtered as noise we measure this in meters squared so for example the f117 stealth bomber designed in the 1970s had a radar cross section of 0.003 meters squared about the size of a hummingbird when picked up on radar. Now this doesn't mean it's invisible, but low observable, as was proven when one was shot down in 1999 during the NATO air campaign in Yugoslavia, allegedly after flying repeated flight paths that became known to Yugoslav forces, and being picked up on radar as it opened its bomb bay doors, which increased the radar cross-section of the aircraft as it revealed its non-stealth coated underbelly. This being said, the F-35 is, in comparison, claimed to have a frontal radar cross-section of 0.0001 meters squared, with its advanced fiber mat radar absorbent material. The SU-57, however, has a radar cross-section of 0.1 to 1 meter squared. Now this claim isn't by the West, but claimed by Sukhoi themselves. This means that it has 1,000 times of a worse radar cross-section than the F-35. In fact, it has a similar radar cross-section not to other stealth fighters, but 4th gen fighters like the F-18 Super Hornet or the Saab Gripen, which are not 5th gen fighters and not stealth. With such a large radar cross-section, the Felon would be greatly outmatched in any engagement with the F-35, F-22 and being unable to confidently ensure dominance against many Western 4th generation fighters. To understand the real world difference, let's take the S-400's 91N6E search radar as reference. According to the manufacturer, the 91N6E has a detection range of 390 kilometers against a 4 meter squared RCS target. So it should be that an F-18 Super Hornet is detectable from 275 kilometers, the SU-57 from 155 kilometers, and an F-35 from 27 kilometers. In short, a radar will be having around six to ten times greater detection range against a felon compared to its competitor, the F-35. So when it comes to stealth, for a stealth fighter, the SU-57 genuinely sucks. But why? Well, the issues of the SU-57 come down to a number of things. Stealth is achieved in a number of ways, for one, and one of these is being shape. Now, shape can be simulated and compared on computer softwares and in physical form with models. Now, I'm going to link some citations to the one I've used, and it's fantastic work and goes even further into depth for those of you interested if you wish to look into it. 
Now, one element of this test is that the material of the aircraft is not taken into account, as the classified RAM coatings cannot be calculated using these simulations. Now, in this test, the F-35 comes out with a radar cross-section of 0.06, much less than the stated figure due to the RAM coating radar absorbent material not being taken into account. And the SU-57 comes in at 0.4. For added reference, the J-20 achieved 0.2, so the SU-57 is by far the least stealthy of the three. So it's not very well designed for stealth in general, but why? Well, firstly, the frontal view of the Felon shows that the fan blades of the engine are easily visible front on if scanned by radar. With so many edges leading to a spike in radar cross section, this is a big disadvantage for stealth. This is due to a lack of something called serpentine air intakes that would usually conceal the engine, as is seen in the F-35 and F-22 respectively. As well as this, there are certain issues such as the IRST dome, an older style targeting module that is not present on modern stealth aircraft like the F-35, which has a more advanced system called EOTS which reduces RCS over the previous system whilst being an upgrade in range and target acquisition. As well as this, it's worth noting that the Felon's IRST dome, when in use, will not have a RAM coating to avoid radar spiking when it hits that area, as the IRST dome's front portion will give off a large spike to the aircraft's RCS. While it is hidden when it's turned off, as the rear portion does have a coating, when the felon is actively searching for targets, it will have a less stealthy radar cross-section. This is why this system is absent from planes such as the J-20, the F-22 and the F-35. It is however seen on the SU-75 Checkmate, so it will be interesting to see how stealthy the Checkmate truly is. The shape of the fighter could also have been greater optimised for stealth but it seems the Russians have doubled down on the aging fighter philosophy of yesteryear, meaning stealth shaping was compromised, and with the L-35's built-in system that automatically tracks radar signals and autonomously positions the aircraft in the optimal position to reduce its signature, it's clear the SU-57 is going to have a hard time comparing. And lastly, there is the matter of radar absorbent material, or RAM for short. Sure. The F-117 utilised a coating that had a heavy maintenance requirement, and while this was greatly improved with the B-2 and the F-22, the Americans' experience with stealth is its eights up its sleeve, with the F-35 stronger, more durable and stealthier coating giving it a huge advantage over the Felon. Now, some of you may be wondering, Kubota, what about the exposed screws that I saw on Reddit? Doesn't that show up on radar? Well, that is indeed an issue. It presents an even greater one than you may think. The build quality to put the plane together may have its flaws, but the fact that the screws are exposed shows that the SU-57 lacks radar absorbent material, at least in the viral photo. Much is yet to be desired of the aircraft's material, with the commonly seen paint scheme looking so different from other stealth aircraft because optimal RAM coating is typically prioritised over having different colours and styles. It is unlikely the plane has a very effective coating either if Sequoia is claiming an RCS that isn't much better than simulations find from the shape alone. But if you are wondering, such exposed elements such as crews and heads will appear on radar too. What other builds quality can be heavily criticised is the presence of bubbles in the cockpit glass. I mean this is Russia's attempt at a fifth generation stealth fighter. It should have been the cream of the crop of Russia's air force and they couldn't get the fucking glass canopy right. You're supposed to be making a stealth fighter, not a bubble bath. Maybe they were going for a more relaxed spa-like atmosphere in the cockpit. I imagine the pilot would need it. That tells me enough about the quality control to not have high hopes for this poor aircraft. Not only is the quality of the production quite bad, but it seems the Russians have forgotten that they usually try to make up for that recurring shortfall with quantity, because this plane's largest weakness seems to be that there's hardly any of them. Since the first fabled flight in 2010, there are only 10 SU-57s in the Russian Air Force. In comparison, in 2021 alone, a total of 142 F-35 fighter jets were delivered. 
With the total number of F-35s in use being nearly 1,000 as of April 2023, with this number's plan to be 3,000, as the cost of the fighter jet rapidly tumbles production soars, and the, the SU-57 simply cannot compare to this. This immediately shows the reasoning behind the classic Russian wonder weapon treatment of the felon, which also translates to other failed projects such as the T-14 Armata, extremely low production rates leaving the vehicle to have more propaganda value than strategic. This shows a further credible expectation for the SU-75 checkmate. With so many of Russia's post-Soviet production attempts failing to win export success or basic levels of domestic production to fit need over and over again. Truly, the SU-57 is a metaphor for the Russian military's production industrial capabilities in the modern era after the fall of the USSR. Sure, Russia can occasionally produce some decent stuff, but when it can, it's rare or insignificant, and the stuff that truly matters is overrated time and time again. Russia simply is not the Soviet Union. It doesn't have the same production capabilities, expertise, or the money to make such projects work. This will likely be the case for the SU-75 Checkmate 2. As mentioned earlier, the initial prototype displayed an old-style IRST dome. Fine for use in a fourth generation aircraft, but not on a fifth generation stealth aircraft. It seems that if the Russians still haven't advanced from this, who knows what else they will still be lagging behind. And while the felon could have a number of its limiting challenges remedied in the future, it is highly likely that this will be too little, too late, if that is even finally achieved. So, when we stack the SU-57 up against this competition, it falls vastly short. Yes, it makes an interesting sound when it flies overhead. Yes, it paint job looks kinda cool, but the truth is, it just sucks. It's nearly a generation behind the F-35, which greatly outperforms it in every important metric in modern aerial combat. By seeing it first, hitting it first, without even appearing to the SU-57 even visually. So the SU-57 fails as a stealth fighter. And unfortunately for it, that means in the modern world that the felon is nothing but a target. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found the analysis insightful and informative. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to give it a like and a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions or thoughts or opinions about my arguments, please share them in the comments section below. I always appreciate your feedback and love engaging in discussions with you. Also, if you're feeling generous and want to support our channel, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Your donations will help us continue producing ever more high quality videos that challenge conventional wisdom and inform public discourse on the matters of geopolitics and defense. Finally, if you know someone who might enjoy this video, or someone that's bragging about the SU-57, the overrated hangar queen, please share it with them. I've been Kaboda, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.